Good evening. This is Kidney News and I'm your host, Prasad. Rafizi Romli did not interfere when the MACC first raided his invoke office. However, after finding out how his staff were treated, Rafizi called the graft buster a bully and he's no longer going to keep quiet, with Azam Baki fixed in his crosshairs. Rafizi Ramli has warned MACC chief Azam Baki that Pakatan Harapan will once again come after him over his previous alleged shareholding scandal if the coalition wins GE15. Lepas menang pilihan raya, kami cari Azam Baki insyaAllah. Saya harap Azam Baki, saya tahu Azam Baki tengok ni. Saya harap bila Pakatan Harapan menang, Kami cari kamu, kamu jangan nak salahkan adik kamu sekali lagi. Speaking at a Harapan Mega Chirama in Johor Bahru last night, Rafizi said the MACC must first face the court over the graft busters raid of his company, Invoke Solutions. Rafizi said they will meet in court today and the country will vote on Saturday. He added that after Harapan wins the election, they will go and find Azam. A crowd of 1,000 Harapan supporters cheered when Rafizi said this. Last December, outgoing Sungai Bulo MP R. Sivarasa filed an urgent motion seeking the Day One Rakyat to discuss Azam's alleged ownership of shares in a publicly listed company while serving as MACC's investigations director previously. In January, Azam said he had informed the MACC Corruption Prevention Advisory Board that the shares were bought by his brother who borrowed his name and that he believed he did not do anything wrong. The declaration triggered a Securities Commission probe that eventually found no evidence of proxy trading as Azam had control over his own trading account. Rafizi said he had initially refrained from interfering in MACC's first raid at Invoke on Tuesday, but lawyers were subsequently assigned after further demands were made for documents containing confidential information belonging to Invoke's customers. He pointed out that the MACC must seek an order from the High Court on its request to seize documents covered by confidentiality clauses. As Prime Minister, Isma Sabri was the one who advised the Agong on when to dissolve Parliament. Experts told the AMNO leader not to hold elections during the monsoon season. But here we are. Now, the floods which occurred in several parts of the country early today appears to be a reality check for the caretaker Prime Minister. All disaster and security-related agencies have been ordered to be on alert for monsoon and flash floods. This is after continuous heavy rain in the Klang Valley overnight caused floods. It also impacted areas such as Sagama, Johor and Pasir Mas and Kelantan. Caretaker Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaqub said all the agencies should be in a full state of preparedness to ensure public safety. Isma Sabri said he is worried and does not want the flood tragedy that occurred in Siri Muda in Shah Alam, Selangor to reoccur. Photos posted by netizens showed that various areas in Klang, including Taman Sentosa, Bayu Perdana and Klang Utama were flooded. Videos show that the water flooded into several houses where many netizens complained of a sleepless night so that they could stay alert in case the flood water flowed into their houses. The 1MDB trial will have to resume after GE15 because Najib's lawyer Shafi Abdullah is still on MC and the prosecution have yet to prepare their witnesses. Prosecutors were unable to get five witnesses ready on short notice for today's 2.28 billion ringgit 1MDB corruption trial against Najib Abdul Razak. On top of that, Najib's lead defence counsel Muhammad Shafi Abdullah is still on three-day medical leave following a dental procedure. Because of this, the Kuala Lumpur High Court postponed the trial to Monday next week. Deputy Public Prosecutor Ahmad Akram Garib informed trial judge Colin Lawrence Sequera that the prosecution did its best to call the five witnesses. However, none of them could come as it was done on short notice, and two of the witnesses were overseas. The prosecutors, however, added that the 43rd prosecution witness, the EDGE Managing Director, Tong Kui Ong, is available to be cross-examined by the defence team. At this juncture, Najib's co-counsel, Ramat Haslan, informed that it would be not possible as Shafi is still on medical leave today. Ramat said that Shafi is still suffering from pain in his gums. Sequera then adjourned trial to Monday next week. Yesterday, Tong testified that Najib showed him the door in 2015 when he tried to warn the then Prime Minister about the role that Jolo played in the embezzlement of funds from 1MDB. 
Najib is on trial over four counts of abuse of power and 21 counts of money laundering, involving 2.28 billion ringgit from 1MDB. If you like what we do and would like to support the channel, please click on the link in the description. This is how we make sure we remain independent and keep those in power accountable to you, the voters. Now to our next story, Anwar Ibrahim has a message for the people of Gombak. Anwar Ibrahim has urged voters in Gombak to teach their incumbent MP Asmin Ali a lesson for betraying the mandate of voters. At a mega charama attended by more than 5,000 people in Gombak yesterday, Anwar said he wanted to see Asmin suffer a disastrous defeat in the November 19th general election. Anwar then linked Asmin to the tale of Siki Tol, a treacherous individual in 16th century Malacca, who left Malacca vulnerable to the invading Portuguese. This led to the collapse of the Malacca Sultanate. Asmin has been Gombak MP for the three terms, which he won under the PKR ticket. This time, he is contesting as a Perikata national candidate. In 2020, Asmin and nine other PKR MPs left the party to force the collapse of the Harapan administration. Most of the defectors joined Basatu, which formed a new government. A study has found Abdul Hadi Awang to be quite the troublemaker in this election's campaign period. Abdul Hadi Awang has been identified as one of the key amplifiers of inflammatory language during the GE15 campaign. This is according to the preliminary findings of a social media monitoring initiative led by the Centre for Independent Journalism. The past president was described as amplifying divisive, racist, intolerant and hate-based narratives. CIJ also identified six past youth chief, Shahiful Nasir, singer Jamal Abdullah and actor Zul Hazaini as creating fear-triggering Muslim voters. CIJ added that Hadi and Pass have also resorted to red tagging in recent weeks, with the continued accusation of DAP being communist. Pakatan Harapan Nga Korming was also accused of making inflammatory remarks. CIJ notes that while not at the same level of intensity, Harapan has also played the race card. The project is supported by the University of Nottingham Malaysia, University Science Malaysia and University Malaysia Sabah. The caretaker government has denied Rafizi's claim that it approved a multi-million ringgit project after parliament was dissolved. The 285 million ringgit reservoir sewer ridge upgrade project in South Klang was not approved after Parliament was dissolved on October 10. The denial came from the Environment and Water Ministry. Rafizi Ramli yesterday produced a letter dated October 27, which purportedly detailed the Finance Ministry's approval of the project for direct negotiations with a company. The Ministry clarified the project had been approved as early as November 2020 and that the project's procurement had begun on October 6 last year. The Ministry has not issued letters of intent to offer letters and letters of acceptance of tender, as well as any form of negotiations with contractors after the dissolution of Parliament. It said hence the statement from Rafizi does not arise at all. The Ministry reiterated that the claims of the project being approved after the dissolution of Parliament had no basis and that relevant authorities should investigate the matter. Previously, there was a Treasury circular on October 18, stating the caretaker government must avoid entering into contractual commitments that would have financial implications for the next government. Outgoing Finance Minister Tunku Zafro Abdul Aziz responded to Rafizi's allegations yesterday, saying the October 27 letter was not an agreement to award a contract to a company. Instead, it was a letter to approve negotiations involving the Environment and Water Ministry. The GE15 campaign is making candidates do things we usually won't see them do, like dance on stage, and in Kyrie's case, dance on stage with the group Lock Up. Videos of election candidates dancing on the GE15 campaign trail have gone viral on social media. A video clip of Sungai Bulo candidate Kyrie Jamaluddin dancing with Tamil music group Lock Up has been circulating on social media platforms TikTok and Facebook. The group peaked in popularity in the 1990s. The video clip from the event last night has also been circulating on WhatsApp. Similarly, a clip of Muda's more candidate Syed Sadiq Syed Abdul Rahman joining a Joget event is gaining some views on TikTok. But the clip of Syed Sadiq who appeared out of step is unable to gain as much attention. 
And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.